Hello guys, this is uh, part two of the right wing truck mapper. Uh, I know several guys have been waiting for this, um, you know, because I said I, I would share some PID settings and those kinds of things with you as well. Um, so just to, to recap here, um, this is uh, a right wing truck, the molded version, um, and I've got uh, it flying with a, a Pixhawk autopilot. And then the idea here is that this aircraft will be utilized for vegetation mapping for the most part. So um, it is uh, modified to take a Sony Alpha 5100 camera that is itself modified to be color infrared. So it, it will detect blue, green and near infrared light. So um, with that, let's take a look at some of the modifications I did. Um, and then after that I'll show you the flight that I did for uh, parameter tuning and I'll share some of those um, tuning parameters of the Pixhawk with you. First off, one of the things that I had a concern about initially was the placement of the pitot tube uh, because I, I was worried about the placement in relation to this long nose of the aircraft. So. Um, you don't want turbulence to affect your your airspeed readings, um, but in fact it turned out not to be a problem. So um, that placement of the pitot tube was far enough away laterally from the the nose uh, for it not to be affected by turbulence from the nose. Um, so it it worked pretty well. Um, I, I made this little sleeve. So those of you who are familiar with the Pixhawk system. Now that one of the things that you often do before takeoff is to um, to basically just do a pre-flight calibration, um, and to do that you you have to also uh, you know just just cover all the holes on your pitot tube. So a sleeve like this just makes that process more convenient. As, far as the rest of the components are concerned, um, I, I've kept everything pretty much the same as it was in the previous video. So I won't go over all of that again. Um, I'll just show you the modifications um, for installation of the camera. So um, here you can see uh, it's very simple actually. Um, I basically just created a hole um, that is the exact same diameter as the front end of the lens that I'm using. Um, and that then helps to give you a, a friction fit so the camera basically just slips in there and then I made a little um, sort of shelf here and the only function of that is to to make sure that the camera is kept level um, because of of the fact that you have the battery on one side of the camera and if, if you don't have something to support the other side then um, it tends to just shift to the side a little bit the other thing that I had to do was to make a groove here um, and that is so that when I have the camera attached to the cable there is space for the cable to move in and out as I put the camera into the aircraft. Okay, so here is the camera. Um, this is the Sony Alpha 5100 um, color infrared camera and um, it basically just pops in. Um, it is, you know, it's, it's a friction fit for the lens into the hole there and um, it just sits there level like this. Um, you know, there's the, the groove accommodating the cable, and and that's it. Simple as can be. Um, you, know, you, you basically just switch the camera on. Um, you know, close the lid, and, and you're ready to go. Uh, this module from Mobile X Copter has proven to be quite reliable in combination with this camera, the Alpha, the Sony Alpha 5100. So um, simple, easy to install in a very reliable solution. Uh, just a couple of things to point out here. <clears throat> um, the foam here at, at the bottom is, is quite thick so when you have the, the camera installed with that Sony 16 millimeter lens, um, it's an E-mount lens, um, there is actually a lot of clearance um, between the bottom of the lens and the bottom of the foam here so um, there is little danger of actually damaging the lens on a landing. Um, so that's that's kind of nice. You don't have to lift the camera inside the body or anything. You can just sort of you know, press it in. Makes the installation very simple. Another thing I want to point out here are these um, lugs you know, with the, that accommodate my my catapult launcher pins. Um, 
So I know some people have been interested in this as well. So it's it's really simple. I, I just turn these um, from Delrin, from a Delrin rod. So just simply on a lathe. So this is what they look like before installation. So I just you know cut the slice from a Delrin rod and then I turn this on a lathe. Um, the, the hole there is uh, 3 eighths of an inch. Um, the width here is one and a quarter inch. Um, so yeah, that's, that's quite simple to do. So it's proven to work pretty well. Um, I, I was a bit concerned with just using hot glue here and, and not any other reinforcement um, that you might develop cracks or something you know, in the foam itself. But um, after several launches now, it, it hasn't uh, you know, caused any problems. Okay, let's take a look at the PID tuning flight. So here you can see me assembling the launcher. It's a catapult launcher from Ag Eagle. That's uh, pretty convenient to use for different designs of aircraft. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to adapt different aircraft to the launcher. Um, here you can see me activating the Pixhawk and going through my pre-flight inspections. Um, everything looked okay, so I moved ahead with the launch. Um, here you can see me uh, attaching the rest of the bungees, so I do that just before the launch. Um, and you can adjust the power to some extent by um, putting on more or, more or fewer of these bungees. In this case I'm using all of the ones that I have available, which are eight, um, which provides ample power for the launch. The launch is pretty easy, just press the paddle um, and then open the throttle. So first thing I did was to just trim the aircraft in manual mode and then I went to fly-by-wire mode and everything looked okay there. I, I did a few big circles and so on and it, it looked fine. So I then went into auto mode. So this is the last part of the flight that I'm showing here when everything had been tuned already. So you can see that it's flying pretty straight on the, li on the lines. Um, it's flying along a rectangular course there. And what I was looking for to, to achieve was for it to stay pretty much on the line of flight once it's intercepted the line, you know, following the turns. So you can see it succeeded pretty well in that. Um, and there you see it coming down for the landing. Um, since I knew that the autopilot was working fine, I did the landing in fly-by-wire mode, um, which makes it really easy to land the aircraft. So that flight pattern there was in spite of pretty, some pretty gusty and stiff winds up high. You can see there the wind speed was 10 to 12 uh, meters per second um, at 100 meters where I was flying. Um, and this, for those who are interested, this is the battery, deplet battery depletion rate. Um, it used about 25% of the battery for every 15 minutes of flight. So that means um, practically you should be able to fly for you know at, at least 45 minutes quite safely on an 8,000 milliamp hour 5S battery. And here um, I will leave you with um, the parameters that I ended up with. Um, so you can pause this and you know, take a look at those in detail if you want to. Um, but basically it was very easy to tune um, as usual with a plane that inherently flies well it is also usually very easy to tune. So um, the right wing drug is no exception to that uh, general rule of thumb. So I, I just started with the same parameters that I use on the, the Spade 47 or the Zephyr 3 and um, work from there. And um, the main thing that I had to change was actually the L1 parameter um, to get it to fly precisely on the lines. I had to reduce that from 17 to 15. Um, apart from that, it was pretty much the same with just small variations compared to the Zephyr 3. Thanks and bye-bye.